Hi folks, Scott here, and this is the wrap for Friday, September 6th. I have a lot to cover here, so let me power through. Um, going into Monday, after today's action, there's actually quite a few unique patterns in play, and these are going to show up in our daily worksheet, which will be available to our members here in about 30 minutes, as soon as I'm done here with this video. They include what we call a false down day, a red candlestick that closed higher. Uh, that has some unique dynamics and is core to my database of patterns that I monitor. We also um, closed with a wide range day, the widest range day of the past seven. This was a huge range today. Uh, if you can see those wicks there, that'll show up in the database. Um, there's a third one I'm forgetting for some reason. Oh, Monday Post Jobs Report. That'll also show up in the um, TGP worksheet. So I'm not going to cover those because of that. I just want to point them out to you to give you a heads up. Lots going on heading into Monday. Now what I thought would be interesting would be to play off a theme I've been looking at recently of late because we've had quite a few and that is trading gaps after a five day high close that was not a 10 day high close because we still have the 10 day high close over here. So five day high close not a 10 day high close specifically on a Monday. Now I had to remove the market conditions in order to get the sample sizes large enough, but I did test these with the current market conditions being above the 10 and the 200 and the numbers were consistent. So that makes the number pretty reliable. So here you go. 50-50 in terms of which way you're likely to gap after a 5 day high close that was not a 10 day high close um, heading into a Monday. Uh, so that doesn't tell us much there. However, clearly a short bias using an end of day stop. Now I don't use end of day stops, but it's a good place to stop to start your analysis. And you can see it has above average win rate and above average profitability without the with the total profit shown there on 10 contracts not being overly influenced by any single trade. So clear short bias there. Down gaps have average historical win rate. Um, it might be tradable because there's a monster loser included in the total net profit. In fact, if you get rid of that one monster loser, it appears this has been profitable historically. So down gaps probably a neutral setup overall would be my guess. Up gaps slightly attractive, at least based upon this one particular unique pattern. All right, um, let's look at what we had going into today, starting with our today's gap play worksheet. A um, couple things I want to point out because I actually missed this and it's a great use of our data and one of many examples of how you can use our data to support um, reasonable trade ideas. And this was from a member last night. Uh, I always look at the odds, opening odds, which is um, shown here for the next day. And as we um, have shown and proven, if these odds are 55% for gapping up or higher, then at least since December it's been averaging a greater than 70% chance of gapping up the next day. So when I saw it was 54, I thought to myself, close but no cigar, and I discounted it. However, one of our members noted um, that the worksheet had these other positives down here that favored an up gap, namely day of monthly jobs report, greater chance of gapping up than down, check, false up day, check, after doji, slight check, inverted hammer, check, and NR7 day, check all five things and e even though the premise of his question he got a little bit confused he was concerned he was asking me you know the fact that the greatest opening area right you can take our 10 zones and organize them into four opening areas these four here sh was to open between the close and the low did it still make sense to go long so when I started looking and I noted these things and I noted that this area um, we closed on Thursday with only about a two point difference between the close and the low. This is a small window, but if we open above the highs in the ES, for example, it would have been at least a five and a quarter point gap, which it was more than that. I mean, a 34% chance of that. So, much greater chance of making more was the way I interpret it. Um, and only a, more importantly, only a 7% chance of gapping down. So, I actually decided to trade the overnight uh, because of this gentleman's email or his questions got me looking at it. And let me just show you very quickly the thought process. Again, I'm not a big overnight trader, but I know quite a few of you are using this data with very good success, and I wanted to share my thought on it. So this is last night's overnight action. So around 10 o'clock Eastern time, price was around 15.49. We were still within a couple points, roughly, of yesterday's lows. The market loves to run stops below lows. 
Um, so I thought this was a very good opportunity, to, knowing there was only a 7% chance of opening below this low, knowing we had the jobs report today, which could be a catalyst for a big move up or down. I didn't care about you know going down. I'd only lose two points. I was willing to risk two, two and a half points, which is what I use, a two and a half point stop. Took off half at plus two, a test of the lows at 51, and held the um, last half for a test of the highs. As it turned out, I got up plus two and plus eight or nine points for a really nice small discretionary overnight win, but it was all based on overnight historical probabilities. So good stuff there. Um, second thing I want to point out is that opening above the highs, the average from our worksheet showed that all eight gap guides average a greater than 60% win rate and a greater than 1.3 profit factor. That met my minimum criteria. Pretty much you can guarantee I'm going to trade it, but I always check these numbers for confirmation. Unique day, jobs report, check. That's a positive historically. False up day, check. After a doji, during similar market conditions, check. Inverted hammer, neutral, but not bad. And after an NR7 day, the most narrow range day of the past seven, check. Four of these five unique patterns favor shorting an up gap. So even though we had a large gap, there was no way I was not going to trade this gap. Um, and you'll get, if you're new to following me or our approach, you'll get used to how to synthesize all this data. But clearly, the bulk of evidence favored shorting an up gap today. Even last night's video wrap showed a big positive right here, right? Up gaps after uh, closing above the 10 but below the 20 day moving average. Uh, large up gaps, very positive historically, with one exception uh, above the 10 and above the 200, but not at a 10 day high close. That was 50 50, a little bit concerning, but these others were positives. Uh, and large up gaps in September are pro historically problematic. Only 5 of 20. Yuck. But as I explained in our trading room, uh, I discount monthly seasonality because monthly seasonality is highly correlated with market conditions, meaning uh, there are different times of the year that are more likely to have be above the 10 and day moving average, for example, versus below it. Um, so market conditions and that analysis that included in our guides accounts for monthly seasonality most of the time. Maybe that's the short message for you, okay? So bottom line is slightly attractive guides, lots of pauses for up gaps. Uh, I was willing to trade it no matter where it opened. Now I had a fairly detailed plan today, a little bit unique. I was going to trade the ES in the UHC zone. Um, and really, you could have justified more than a half size trade, but with the Globex high being so much higher than yesterday's highs in this level here, I thought there was room we could get stopped out. So I was going to reduce my risk a little bit, half size. Or if we open in the UH zone above 61, which was an area that would allow my stop to be well above Globex highs, right? Because Globex was uh, right here at 50. Seven, is that right? Why am I getting confused here? Oh, because it's all over here. We had already spiked up on the news report. See that level there? That was at 64. So by waiting for price to get to at least 61, I would have my stop at least two or three points above Globex highs. And this, because this office serves as resistance. So that was my thinking there. And if it didn't open to either area, but instead no man's land right between, I was going to go short with a six-point stop. I tend to use a six-point stop in my UH zones. But um, wait and just simply place my trade. Oh, here it is. Um, between this area, wait and set up a trade to go short at 61. Let it trade up there. It's probably be some post-open volatility. Get me filled and get me short. So my stop would be in the right place. I thought this was a really good plan. I worked hard on it and was very thoughtful and was pretty fired up about it. Even though I never know if they're going to work, I'm always trying to get to a state um, where I have peace of mind. That no matter what happens, I have a good plan and I'm willing to be wrong and proven wrong and lose money. Uh, and I was certainly there today and it was a great plan. Now, in the spirit of disclosure, I explained to the trading room, I went, I thought like the setup so much, I went uh, short pre market in a couple of accounts. Um, including my mechanical system also took the trade uh, because it was that good of a setup today. So it was all about my core account. Whoops, that's my trading room charts a little bit busier. We opened at 16.59 and a quarter in that no man's land area below 61 and above 58 and a quarter. So I set up my order to go short at 16.61 like I said I would.
And I really thought it was a very good chance I'd get hit. And if you look, you have to look real close to pay attention. Because I am good, really good sometimes. The high was 1661 this morning. Exactly, exactly where I was going short. For a sweet seven, actually eight point win down to 53 and a quarter. Actually, my targets were 53 and a quarter and 53.50. So that's um, seven and a half points with one problem. I did not get filled. 1661, to my utter disbelief, it went textbook to this confluence area. This was R2, by the way, from our price guides. Let me show it to you real quickly. You ought to be using these things if you're not or keeping track on your own. They're magic for days like this. Set them more to go short at 1661. One tick in front of that. Because we were opening just above the highs. Of these key pivots are off and hold. It went there and it didn't fill me. And it rolled over immediately. Now, I was a little bit tongue in cheek there. I'm good, but not that good. Um, I got lucky it went there and rolled over. Well, unlike, I guess, is maybe a better way to look at it. Perfect plan. I just didn't get filled. There was no contingency. What if I don't get filled? Because the odds of not getting filled were honestly one in a hundred at best. One in a hundred at best. Maybe one in a thousand. Um, we traded on my target. It was a limit order. Didn't fill me. Now, some of our members, I don't know if they got filled on the level. I actually didn't pay close attention. I was a little too frustrated, quite frankly. Um, some people went ahead and got short. Some had already gotten short. You know, and I was already short in multiple other accounts, just not my core account, the one that I talk about in our trading room. And it was very frustrating for me because it rolled right down, filled the gap. Now, one thing I did miss that some of our members caught was that if you look at the worksheet, what were the odds of gap fill for the extended or odds for extended target today? Great. That's what these numbers are here. If we got gap fill, the odds of extended target being hit were very high. 86% of historical gaps on a sample size of 1,561 that filled the gap across our, our eight indices had gone on to hit the extended target. So many of our members milked another two or three points out of the trade, which was awesome. There were 10 and 11 point winners. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating. There were many in our trading room. I had a goose egg in my core count, and I'm pretty frustrated. 15 minute guides didn't show anything. Uh, correction, 15 minute guides came out as this gap was filling and I was pretty frustrated I got behind maybe 30 seconds to a minute venting a little bit and I'm just being honest I'm, I'm, I'm human and was just a little frustrated I worked hard this morning to come up with a good plan um, but check this out 15 minute as I told people you know keep your head stay focused there's still a chance to make some money odds of favor of the low breakout really strong here 16 1.3 I'm looking for 55 1.1 check check uh, no check for the NASDAQ and check in the Russell three of the four futures looking at the ETFs strong numbers in spider check lean that way in the diamonds half a check uh, Q's did not favor it and then Russell lean that way so very strong very solid numbers not real strong but very solid worthy of a trade and by the time I went to set the trade up it had already hit its target kid you not uh, may have hit it there I mean it was moving lows 40 and a quarter uh, no, it was down here. Low at 42 and a quarter. Yep. So a huge move in that candlestick there before I could get filled. So honestly, I don't know if I would have caught it had I not been behind, but you, you always want to maximize your chances. And I got a little bit behind only out of frustration, and that is wrong, and I'm, I apologize to the trading room. But um, most of the time, I keep my cool pretty good. Um, just a little disappointing today, to say the least. Even though I made money, didn't lose a dime. I had a good plan. You want to be rewarded, and the execution errors can cost you. So, and I didn't screw up. I was not plan. I did not have my other account set up to go for extended target. I should have, like many of our members did. But um, that was it. The uh, range guys showed nothing in them, so I left alone. Didn't know other trades all day. So there you go. Sorry for the long-winded video today, but there was a lot to talk about, and uh, you know, it was a pretty good week. So uh, have a great weekend, and we'll see you Monday. Take care.